Hey everyone. So it's been a rough week. Um, I was going to do another vlog and I was just not in a good headspace for it. And I really hadn't even planned to film anything this weekend. And then I was like, no, filming is something that you enjoy, you know, putting content, interacting with people. So, uh, yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna grab the camera and see what I need to talk about. And what I realized was I have not talked about the books that I read in January. So I thought, okay, cool. I'll pull them up on my phone, talk about the books. That'll, that'll, you know, be great. Make me feel good. So, um, in January, I had a pretty good reading month. I ended up reading 13 books. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how many of those were like five star or four star or whatever. Like I, I could come up with stats later, but not at the moment. Um, but I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about the different ones. So, and I can, you know, get into it or whatever. So the very first book that I finished for this year, for January, for the beginning of January, um, and I finished it on January the 3rd, is Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire. I gave it four stars. I really, it's number five in the Wayward Children series. I really love the Wayward Children series. Um, haven't read anything else from Shauna McGuire. I know that she's written some like urban thriller mystery, you know, paranormal, or ur urban paranormal, you know what I mean. Um, I haven't read any of that. Haven't gotten a middle game. But I really love the Wayward Children series, and so I felt like reading that was a quick and easy way to start the year off, right? Um, the next one that I finished, I think I started it in 2021 and didn't finish it until, um, let's see, when did I finish it? Oh, I finished it on January the 4th, is Iron Widow by Zarin J. Zhao. Um, it was so good. It, I gave it five stars. It's YA, like, fantasy, but with, like, sci-fi elements because they're powering with their, like, sort of essence, their magic. They're, I'm not quite sure how to explain it, these giant machine things. And they kind of battle these other machine things. And um, it's going to be a trilogy or a series there's going to be more because the way that it ended omg i cannot wait for the next one um so yeah that was my first five star of the year um i also the next one that i finished is um i'm looking at my phone is sales at work volume five um so i had started reading sales at work in 2021 and i liked it because it was one that like other people had like um recommended to me because it's like anth anthropomorphized like cells in your body and like I think it's pretty cute I think it's good I gave that one four stars I kind of waver between like three or four stars for those because they're good but they're not like knock my socks off good um but I finished that on January 11th also finishing on January 11th I read The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton um, it, I gave that five stars and I read this one both with my physical copy and with the audio and the audio has one of my favorite audiobook narrators, uh, Bonnie Turpin. Um, and it has like a full cast also. Um, it's got Daisy Jones and the six vibes, but Daisy Jones and the six focused on character relationships and the final revival of Opal and Nev goes beyond the characters. Yes, it is a lot about the characters' relationships, but there's, like, social and political issues that come into play with it that are, I think, as important um, as, you know, the, any of the personal relationships. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it took it a step deeper, like, into the, into the thoughts and whatever. Um, loved it. The next one I finished on January the 15th. And it is Murder at the Mansion, a Victorian Village Mystery by Sheila Connolly. I gave this one one star. <laughs> I did finish it. Um, people in my life were telling me, just DNF it if you hate it so bad. Um, but I did finish it. I powered through it because I wanted to be able to finish it so that I could give like a real 
scathing review. Ugh, that sounds really petty and mean, but you guys know what I mean, right? Um, the, the writing had errors and they were like little bitty errors. So they didn't really, I, I noticed them and they would take me out of the moment, but they weren't, you know, sometimes that's not the author's fault. That's more like the, the publishing, you know, the editing. Um, but the main character was terrible. Oh my god, she was, like, I'm cool with an unlikable character, but she was just, just immature and gross and weird. And, like, the things that she would, like, be down on other characters about were things that she, I didn't feel like she had any room to talk. <laughs> so I did not like it. It was a. Uh, it was one of the selections for the Book Bitch Literary Society. I didn't finish it in time for the meeting, but I had read enough to go to the meeting and go, y'all, I hate this book. Um, another book from the previous Book Bitch meeting, because we were looking at like cozies, was um, a study in Scarlet Women, the Lady Sherlock Number One book by Sherry Thomas. Um, I finished this one the next day. I listened to this one on audiobook because it was free with my Audible Plus. It was in the Audible Plus catalog. I gave it three stars. I mean, it was like three, almost a four, but I, you know, I settled on a three. Um, I will continue that one. In fact, I have the next one in my Audible, like, lineup waiting. Um, so yeah, that one was pretty good. Like, I really liked it. It was like taking Sherlock Holmes, but like twisting it into, um, like female characters and they have you know it's it's happened with Sherlock before but they have Lady Sherlock the, the woman playing who is Sherlock who uh she's coded as with with autism like it's not outwardly said because that's not something they said back then but you you get the you can pick up on the coding really easily um so that was I finished that on January 16th then on January 17th I finished Swimming Lessons Poems by Lily Reinhardt um, and I gave it one star. Um, there were some poems that I didn't, that I liked. Enough, like, I liked. I didn't love them. I liked. They were okay. And then there were a lot that I was just like, really? Like, you couldn't add to this? Or, like, really? Like, I, I feel like I've read this before. Like, it just didn't really hit me. So, I wanted to like it. I hope she keeps writing. But, yeah, that one was just kind of a miss. Um, then, the next book that I read um, was Sells at Work, Volume 6, and I finished that on January the 22nd, and so that finished out that whole arc of Sells at Work, because there was only six volumes in that. Um, it was the ending, the last to the series. I think it came out in 2021, and it had, like, coronavirus in it, so that was kind of, um, that was kind of interesting or whatever. Um, I'm on the fence, but I might read Cells at Work Code Black because it's the same structure and theme where you've got these anthropomorphized uh, cells in the body, but this one is like someone who's drinking too much or doing drugs or, you know, catching venereal diseases and things like that. And I'm like, ooh, that sounds a little spicy. That's like t kicking it up a notch, okay? Um, all right, so that was January 22nd. Also on January 22nd, I finished When the Sky Fell on Splendor. I have a I have a physical copy of it, but I didn't use that. I used the audiobook, and I gave it three stars because it was just, you know, it was kind of okay. But I wanted to, like, read Emily Henry's works because I read um, A Million Junes a while back. Um, and then, um, I've read, uh, what is that? The, uh, Beach Read. No, not Beach Read. Yes? <laughs> okay. Yes. I read Beach Read. And so I was like, okay, I want to kind of continue reading her stuff. Cause it's like, can I really talk about having read her stuff much if I haven't? So I went back and read that one and it's sort of like a Scooby-Doo, uh, what am I thinking of like you know, where these kids are, like, they're working on, like, a YouTube video, and they have, they find, they come across something weird, and it seems like aliens, and they're trying to figure out, because it's having effects on their lives, and they're trying to figure out what the heck is going on, and, like, when I got to the end, and, like, it, you know, the, the, there was the big reveal, I was just sort of like, ho-hum, okay, well, 
All right. <laughs> and that's all I can say about that one. Um, on January 25th, I finished um, the, murder by, the Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. Um, I've... Have I read Agatha? I think I read Agatha Christie like like seriously like 10 years ago like a long time ago I had read like one Agatha Christie and with um the death on the Nile coming out like you know people are like talking about Agatha Christie more and more um and so I listened to this on audiobook because it's supposed to be like the the big like like a like a cornerstone of like these mystery books you know from the queen of mystery right um I gave it four stars it was very good um, didn't, didn't really see the twist coming. Like, it did cross my mind, but I didn't really hang on to it. Um, so yeah, like, it was really good, and I can see why people find that volume, like, really intense, like, really purposeful, and, like, an important piece of, like, the literary history. Um, also on audiobook, on January the 28th, I finished listening to His Truth is Marching on John Lewis and the Power of Hope by John Meacham. Um, this, I, I put, I got this in my Audible um, to listen a while back because in one of the units that I teach at school, we listen to a podcast of John Lewis talking about, it was like an NPR po podcast like years ago that was like um this interview that he did and he's talking about his involvement in the marches and he's talking about his like a little bit of his past like how his parents felt about things and and it made it was like I was interested in it like I teach like seven sections of you know my class so like I had to listen to it seven times in a, like in a row basically and so I was like yeah I'm I you know I want to know more about him so I picked this up because John Meacham is a well-known like history writer uh re really well respected I gave this four stars no I gave it five stars hello I gave it five stars it's really well written um, the audiobook was really well done, and I just felt, it just, it engaged me. Like, whenever I'm listening to or reading, like, you know, um, books that are, like, h historically bent, how engaged do I feel? Like, how informed do I feel? And I do feel like I'm more informed. Um, just realize, though, it just, it covers the scope of his life into, like, the civil rights era it doesn't really get into much of like what happened after like you know and what he was doing I mean they do kind of talk about his life since like some of the things that he had done in more recent years and they and um another thing that's covered is you know that his death because he died in 2020 I believe so I really highly recommend that one Okay, I'm getting to, y'all, I'm getting to the end. Um, the last two books. Okay, so on January the 30th, I read Across the Green Grass Fields, which is The Wayward Children's Number 6 by Shauna McGuire. I gave it five stars. I know that other people have given this one fewer stars because it's a little bit shorter, and maybe it doesn't seem like it's that intense or whatever, but it's The Hooflands. Oh, the hooflands and I guess I was a bit of a horse girl back in the day and so maybe I'm biased but I enjoyed it and I think that it it kind of went in a way it sort of read like a fairy tale and I think it went in a way that was compatible to the hooflands like you couldn't have the kind of drama that you have on the moors in the hooflands like that's not you know what I mean like I feel like like I I, I feel like Sean McGuire did a really good job with that particular one and I will be reading number seven soon haven't gotten to number seven yet but I, I want to read number seven so I'm all caught up okay and then the last book that I read in the month of January I finished this one on January the 30th this was on my Kindle Unlimited and it's the Heart of an Earl Box of Draw Drop Near Number One by K. J. Jackson. I gave this one two stars. Um, I got I, I got it because it was like in the beginning, you know, this girl is like kidnapped by pirates, and then there's like this like treasure, this box thing that, that she's in possession of, and. It was okay. The the st sex scenes were steamy, but I just, you know, like, I, 
I don't know. I may or may not read number two. Because <laughs> I think that the character that number two is based around is more interesting than the characters, because it's a man and a woman, uh, than the characters in this. But I do think that the cover is really pretty. Like, that aesthetic is, like, so pretty. I really like that. But it was just okay. So, yeah, I kind of ended on, like, a womp womp with that, just, like, finishing with a two-star. So it looks like I ran the gamut in January as far as, like, all the different books that I've read. But, yeah, that was 13 of them. So far for this month, we're, like, halfway through February. I've read five. So maybe not have as good a month as January as far as reading goes, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how things go. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my content and you want to see more, can please consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!